Why is it so important that forensic psychology is an evidence-based practice? The early involvement of psychologists within the criminal justice system essentially led to the establishment of many key principles by which psychology would become known and accepted as a science. So we had the McNaughton rule which related to soundness of mind, so the person's cognitive and mental functioning at the time. Then we had the Fry test which regarded acceptability of a science within the criminal justice and legal system. And then this progressed even further to the refinement through the Dorbett standards and principles in relation to what actually constitutes an expert and an established and reliable science. Now, when it comes to forensic psychology, much of the work relates to decision-making about offenders from both a clinical and legal perspective. The decision-making must be informed to be evidence-based practice, which is essentially reliant on the discipline being scientific and rooted in empirical practice. So evidence-based practice is about moving away from making guesses, judgments, and even offering opinions, which really are what we would characterize as pseudoscience. And moving towards evidence-based practice really allows the forensic psychology discipline to be recognized as a form of science and as a form of scientific practice. But of course, as we move towards becoming a scientific practice, we also face challenges such as the CSI effect. So the CSI effect is where jurors have come to believe that physical evidence or even some other aspects of evidence must be present in a case to prove guilt. And of course the CSI effect has emerged from the myriad of crime shows, but forensic testing is not as common as it is in TV shows, and it's often slow and also an expensive process. So there tends to be this assumption amongst jurors that everything will be tested. And this leads to the expectation that the scientific evidence will provide all the answers in the case, which of course is often not the case or not as simple as that. So the CSI effect has led to jurors requiring more scientific evidence and placing greater value on this scientific evidence, which has essentially created biases in their judgment and interpretation of facts. And rarely is forensic evidence a magic tool or a magic button. It is a tool, but it's only one tool in the tool set. And this over-reliance on forensic evidence was highlighted in a case in Victoria where DNA evidence as an investigative tool proved to actually be problematic. So in 2008, 22-year-old Somali migrant Farah Jama was sentenced to six years in jail for a rape that occurred in Melbourne. Now, the victim was a female that was found unconscious and partially dressed in a toilet cubicle at a nightclub. And the woman had a poor recollection of events and was unable to recall seeing Jama at the venue. However, Jama's DNA was found on her body and he was charged with the offence. Now at the time of the offence, Jama had an alibi, but this was not considered sufficient enough to avoid him being charged with the offence. And at the time of sentencing Jama, the judge was highly critical of him, particularly in relation to his lack of remorse for committing the crime and his callous nature towards the victim and the offending. However, after serving 16 months in prison, the conviction was eventually quashed and it was proven that his DNA sample had been contaminated in the lab, with his DNA being in the lab for another matter at the time. Now, in conducting an inquiry into the case, the Victorian Department of Justice criticised the criminal justice system for being influenced by the CSI effect. They commented on the prosecution for having relied on DNA evidence and perceiving this as being infallible, without carrying out the sufficient rigorous investigation to support the case. And the CSI effect has also occurred more broadly, such as criminal minds, with the belief that we can magically predict who will perpetrate a crime, but in reality this is far from the case and instead it requires intensive analysis and review of offenders using 
evidence-based processes such as risk assessment or psychological assessment using structured interview practices and of course having a comprehensive knowledge of the empirical based findings and also knowledge on the variety of crimes and mental health conditions that are related to offending. So the CSI effect has led to complex issues being overly simplified, poorly understood and of course misperceived. And when it comes to forensic psychology, the discipline strives to be rooted in science and evidence-based practice. And there are no sudden looks that convey guilt or mental games that can lure a criminal into a confession. So we're talking about using recognized and valid approaches to applying psychological principles to matters within the criminal justice system.